Hi, it's Lisa here from Monday Morning Cooking Club and today I'm going to make with you the most fantastic pumpkin chiffon cake. It's a great cake for any time of the year, but of course with Halloween coming up, if you're a Halloween sort of person, then it really hits the nail on the head. Okay, let's run through the ingredients. Firstly, starting with the dry, we've got two cups of plain all-purpose flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. They are your dry ingredients, which we're going to sift together in a minute. Then you're going to need 345 grams, which is one and a half cups of caster sugar, seven eggs, which I have separated into the yolks and the whites, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I've got a half a cup of oil and a half a cup of water. And the oil I'm using is just a plain unflavored oil. And today I'm using grapeseed. And the secret ingredient, of course, is pureed pumpkin. If you live in the States and Canada, it's readily available to buy canned pumpkin. Use that by all means. But in Australia, it's harder to find. So what we do is we roast a half a Kent or Japanese pumpkin in the oven without peeling it at 200 degrees Celsius, that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit, for about 50 minutes on an oven tray until it's soft enough to stick a fork in, let it cool, scoop out the flesh, puree it, and then I keep it in freezer containers like this, marked with 260 grams in brackets, one cup pumpkin puree, any time I wanna make this cake. Okay, so let's sift together the dry ingredients. I just have a fine colander and I'm going to put in the flour, the baking powder and the spices. And I'm just going to sift them together. Dry ingredients done. In my stand mixer or in a bowl with a beater, I'm going to add my egg yolks and about one cup of my one and a half cups of sugar. So you can measure it or you cannot. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I've just got to grab my mixer and I'm just going to beat them together straight away until they are pale and thick. So I'll show you now, you can see the egg yolks and sugar are thick and pale, and I'm now ready to go to the next step, which is to add in the oil and the water, which is our liquid ingredients, alternating with our dry. So I'm gonna put the beater on slow. I'm gonna get a spatula, and I'm gonna alternate. A spoon of dry, a couple of spoons of dry ingredients, and a little bit of the liquid, just like that. And the beater is on the lowest speed. And continue to do that until all the mixture is used. I don't want to overbeat it, but I'm beating it just till it is all incorporated. As you can see, I'm going to scrape it down. I'm also going to add in now the teaspoon of vanilla extract, which I could have actually added in earlier, but it doesn't matter. So again, about a teaspoon of that. I'm just going to give it one more beat. I'm going to scrape down the sides and give it one more mix. And I have a lovely smooth batter. And now I'm going to add in the pumpkin puree. And I'm gonna beat it again until it is just incorporated. I don't want to overwork it. Scrape it down once. One more mix and then the base mixture is done. Beautiful. Okay. 
Now you're going to need a new clean bowl for the egg whites. We're going to change to the whisk attachment and I'm going to put the egg whites in the bowl. One ingredient I forgot to mention earlier is a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar and a pinch of salt, which is going to help stabilize the egg whites. Pinch of salt. We'll start the egg whites going. And add in the cream of tartar. So I'm going to whisk the egg whites until soft pigs form, and then I'm going to add the remaining sugar. I'll show you what I mean. So this is just about soft peaks, but not quite. So I'm going to give it another 30 seconds before I add the sugar. As I'm whisking on a medium speed, I'm not going to go higher than that. I'm going to start adding the sugar. I'm not dumping it all in at once and I'm doing it reasonably gradually. Okay, that's all the extra sugar. Now I'm going to whisk it on medium until I have stiff peaks but not dry peaks. So I don't want the mixture to be clumpy or separated, I want it to be smooth and glossy and it's getting that way. I've got my tin ready. The thing about a chiffon cake is that you do not grease your tin. The idea is that you want the batter to stick to the tin as it cooks, so that when you turn it upside down, it doesn't fall out, and the gravity helps keep it high. I can see the marks that the whisk is leaving in the, in the egg whites, and for this cake, I always say it's better to under rather than over with the egg whites. And I think that's pretty good. That's pretty stiff, so that'll do us. So let's just get the last bit off. Beautiful, lovely, glossy and thick. And I'm going to start by adding about a third of the egg white mixture into the base because first I want to lighten the base to make it easier to fold in the remaining egg whites. It's quite a heavy base because of the pumpkin. So I'm going around with my spatula and through the bottom in a circular motion. I'm trying to keep all the air in this batter that I can. Okay, so I think that's ready for the rest. And now we're going to add the remaining egg whites. And now again, gently folding, remembering we're trying to keep it light. Go around the outside, down to the bottom and up again. And I turn the bowl from time to time. And I do actually go in both directions my spatula. We've had debates over the years about whether it's better to use a metal spoon or a spatula to do this. I prefer the spatula. I hate the sound of the metal spoon scraping on the bowl. Uh, the girls love the metal spoon thing so since I'm here on my own I'm doing it with a spatula and I love it. I feel that you can get every last bit from the edges and the bottom more than with a spoon. So as soon as it is beautifully combined. I don't want to see any big yellow streaks or blobs in there from the pumpkin. I want it to be smooth and uniform, but still light and airy. It's really a beautiful batter. It smells spicy and pumpkin-y and it already smells good before it's even cooked. So I'm happy with that. And I'm going to just pour it into my ungreased tin. Just like that. I'm going to scrape out every last bit of the batter. So 
So I'm now going to bake the cake for 55 minutes in a preheated oven, 170 Celsius, 340 Fahrenheit. And then at the end of the 55 minutes, I'm going to turn the oven up to 180 degrees or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about another 15 minutes until it's cooked through. So the cake has just come out of the oven. It didn't quite need the full 15 minutes. It needed about seven minutes after the initial 55. I tested that it was cooked by gently placing my hand on the top of the cake while it was in the oven. And you can feel that the batter is cooked all the way to your hand. You could also use a skewer if you prefer, but you can see that it's starting to come away from the edges. As soon as it comes out of the oven, you need to take your bottle, which you have already checked fits in the funnel, put it into the funnel and invert it onto your bench top just like that and it's going to cool exactly like that until it is completely at room temperature and then we're going to cut it out of the tin. So the cake's completely at room temperature and it's time to cut it out of the tin. So I'm going to remove the bottle you need your cake stand or cake plate, a knife, and I use a plastic plate or a board. Now it's just a matter of cutting it out around the outside first, the outside of the cake, all the way around, then around the funnel, and then push it out from the bottom, looks beautiful, then we have to cut the base and remember it's completely stuck to the base because we haven't greased it which is what you want. I find it easier actually to do this on the bench but I just wanted to show you. Turn it around like that. Then you place the plastic plate on the top and flip it and then your cake stand and flip it again. Many people serve their chiffon cakes the other way around but we serve ours this way with the top at the top and now it's time to ice it. Alongside the pumpkin chiffon recipe in our new book Now for Something Sweet we have a molasses buttercream icing that is so good. And I've just made a half batch of that. You can find the recipe in the book. It's pretty much just butter whipped with icing sugar, molasses, maple syrup, and a bit of vanilla and salt. And because it's only a half portion, I'm just gonna cover the top of the cake rather than the whole cake. And the icing is just a perfect, perfect match. It is luscious and thick and everything you want a buttercream icing to be. Mm. Just literally want to dive right into it. Ready to cut it? I am. This is an extraordinary cake, which you'll see. Perfect. You can find the recipe in our latest book, Now for Something Sweet, available across the world. Happy cooking.